Are you at a point in your life when you're trying to make a decision and maybe your significant other, your friends, your family, your colleagues, professors, somebody just thinks it's an awful idea and are trying to talk you out of it. So they might say things like, it's impossible, you can't do it, with your background you'll never be able to do that, you're a f***ing idiot. Um, there's a whole bunch of different responses of someone trying to talk you out of doing something. There's been a bunch of times in my life where I've completely ignored everyone like that and just kind of done my own thing. Some of those have worked out really well, some of those not so well, so I'm going to walk you through a couple of those stories today. What's up guys? I'm Jeff and welcome to Mr. Thalen. On this channel is basically, I'm sharing with you everything that I'm trying to do as far as seeking balance in life of being successful, fr spending time with friends and family, traveling. Um, all sorts of things. And so if that sounds interesting to you, I'd encourage you to subscribe to my channel. All right, if you saw my video yesterday, I talked about a few tips for productivity and one of those was using a Pomodoro timer. If you wanna check out the video, you can do that up here. Um, and basically what that is, is is to work for 25 minutes and take a five minute break. Um, my computer's telling me I get to take a break right now. I think recording this video is gonna take a bit more than five minutes, but um, check out that video if you want to learn about productivity tips. Another thing is I'm here in our office in WeWork, which has these little phone booths. You can see the wall here, and it's this big. Um, it's a great thing for getting work done, but now that I'm on break, I want to get out of the office. Taking a quick break, I'll be back. Bye. Laura and Diego, <laughs> forgot them, bye bye. Let's grab a quick coffee. All right, so today I want to get out of the office for once and, and tell a story from here. I'm not sure if the weather's gonna cooperate. All of a sudden we step outside and it looks like it might rain. Um, but, you know, another thing as well is like kind of doing your own thing. Um, you know, sometimes I take out this longboard and you can tell people don't expect me to be, you know, carrying around a longboard or using one. So I always get kind of funny looks, but you know what? Sometimes you have to do something that you enjoy doing even if people think you look weird. So yeah, to, to, to kind of get into the topic for today as far as you know, decisions I've made where maybe people didn't think I could do it, didn't think I should do it. Um, kind of the first major one was when I graduated from undergrad at Michigan State in 04. You know, at that time, basically no one thought you could get a job in investment banking um, coming from Michigan State, but it was something I was, you know, hell bent on getting that job. And so I did a ton of networking, sent my resume everywhere, um, went to career fairs, just everything I could do, pounding the pavement to make that happen. And eventually got a job in New York. Um, you know, even though advisors, professors, others saying it just wasn't gonna happen. You know, so that's something as far as like reaching a tough goal that people don't think you'll be able to achieve and they don't want you to be let down by it. But I think a lot of times with, with this topic is more, you know, there's something that maybe your family, significant other friends, whoever just don't understand and, and are confused and don't think it's a good idea, but something you kind of deep down feel that you should do. And so, you know, I had two different jobs in New York and had six weeks off between them and basically decided I want to spend, you know, that time in Latin America. And that was really when I decided that I wanted to um, learn Spanish, um, that later I decided I wanted to actually move to Latin America. 
Um, you know, that trip wasn't something that people were against. But then, you know, when I finished up the second job in New York and wanted to take kind of a year to see if I could find a job, work maybe in Latin America, um, you know, people were really surprised by that. Hey, why don't you continue on the same path in New York and do what everyone else is doing? Um, and so tried to do that, tried to work, but it was during the financial crisis, so I didn't really get a job at the time. But, you know, the what did happen is that I applied to business school and got into a top MBA program. And so having a little bit different story of wanting to get to Latin America, learning Spanish, spending, you know, nine months in Latin America before school um, was something that helped me get into school, even though, you know, at the time people thought, hey, you're giving up something that's safe, you get paid well. Um, and so, but kind of having a cool different story was helpful for getting into to business school. You know, and then again, like at various times through business school, so I could have, you know, again, used my internship to get a safe job in New York and finance, like what I worked in before. But again, I, you know, got an internship in, you know, a small investment fund in Uruguay. And so with that, you know, the difference was, you know, for me, it was a great experience living in a country that most people haven't ever visited before, um, continue to practice Spanish. Um, had the second year of my, my MBA and you know eventually upon graduation I actually moved to Colombia and got a job at an investment fund in Colombia and so this is much different than a lot of my peers were doing I think I was one of the only people from my class who was actually moving to Colombia at the time um, to to work um, and so you know for me it was like making a transition to be in a country I want to spend time in but again people were like what the hell are you doing um, and then again, um, what I had done was I was working in the, at this fund, decided it wasn't exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to be an entrepreneur, um, got into an accelerator entrepreneurship program. So I think I was like one of the earlier people in my class to leave their job um, to do something different. You know, one of the things I want to talk about with this is, you know, I, and I think I'll probably talk about this in other videos of, of the risk of entrepreneurship and kind of quitting something, having a full time stable salary for you know, the dream of having your own business. Um, so a good friend of mine, Patrick McGinnis, wrote this book called The 10% Entrepreneur. And I'm a little bit pissed off at him because if he had written it a couple years earlier, I probably would have taken his advice, stayed in my job, started working on a business. And when it got stable enough, then quit my job to become an entrepreneur. But, you know, I thought it'd be better to just quit my job, do something full time. And the thing is like that decision, you know, I think there were a lot of opinions on to go for it or not go for it. You know, to be an entrepreneur, sometimes you have the attitude of like, if I don't do it now, maybe it'll never happen. And so the difficulty with, with that decision was, you know, I thought it was right at the time, um, wanted to be an entrepreneur, but, but honestly, you know, I spent a few years trying to start different businesses that didn't work out. Um, the financial situation and the, you know, consequences of that have, haven't been easy. Um, and so, you know, that was one of the lessons learned as far as, you know, if you want to try something on your own, do something different, start your own business, you know, if there's a way that you can do that in a less risky way of, you know, starting out part time and then later as things develop, then, you know, turn that into a full time role or kind of what I'm doing right now of I have a digital marketing agency that's most of my time, but then also I'm trying to begin to create content for YouTube. And so I have some clients and income from the business that I have, plus there's a few other you know, side projects that we're working on. And so I think those are the, the biggest things of, you know, I think a lot of times where people are you know, looking to do something different, they're not happy with what they're doing. You know, I think the, the best advice for me is to try to you know, use nights and weekends and kind of spare time to, to get started with something. If it's learning a new skill, um, you know, starting to freelance work a couple hours a week, and as, as those types of things begin to grow, then you know, think about, can I do this full time and, and have the income that I need, as opposed to kind of the decision that I made of, let's just dive in the deep end of the pool and you know, learn how to swim. Well, this is the first video I kind of wanted to talk about some of the personal decisions I've made as far as in my career. Sometimes it was like working your ass off to make something happen and that worked out great. Other times, you know, you kind of have to, you know, weigh your options and sometimes, you know, taking extra risk doesn't always pay off. Sometimes it pays off really big. Um, and another kind of topic related to kind of doing something new, chasing after your dream. I think in today's day and age of, you know, being able to create content online, if it's written, if they're podcasts, if it's on YouTube like this, is that there's a, there's a blog post, I'll put a, a link down below called A Thousand Fans, where basically it talks about with whatever random thing that, you know, you have a passion for and want to share with the world, is if you can find a thousand people to give you a hundred dollars a year, you know, that's a hundred thousand dollars. And so, 
you know, the, the power of the internet to reach those thousand people where they don't have to be in the same city, the same country, you know, even speak the same language sometimes. And so the, the opportunity is right now to be able to do your own thing, start your own business, you know, follow your dream are phenomenal. Um, but it's a matter of, I think, some of the lessons that learned of, you know, sometimes some people saying like, don't try this, it's too risky. You know, you kind of have to listen to some of it, but take it with a grain of salt. And I think, you know, for me, you know, realizing that there's, you know, maybe safer ways to start your own business as far as like starting out part time. Um, and so there's a whole bunch of topics I talked about today from getting a job in investment banking, you know, getting into a top MBA program, um, traveling in Latin America, living in another country, starting your own business, if it's full time or kind of starting a side hustle, um, being a 10% entrepreneur, there's a whole bunch of different topics. Um, and so hopefully I'll get into some of those in other videos. Uh, that's it for today. Um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments, if there's any of these topics that are really interesting to you and you want me to actually do a full video about it, leave it down in the comment section. I mean, if you haven't done so yet, you can subscribe to my channel up here. And there's a few of my other videos along the side here. And until tomorrow, bye-bye.